Hello friends, I'm Sushila Chaudhary, Assistant Professor at Biani Group of Colleges. I'm going to describe you about cerebrovascular accident or stroke. So what is cerebrovascular accident? It is a central nervous system where any blood vessel rupture or blocked due to any thrombosis or embolism formation or any abnormal hemorrhage in the blood vessel. So due to these all faults, uh, brain tissues go undergoes oxygen depletion or damage of the brain tissues occur completely. So this is known as a stroke or cerebrovascular accident. So first of all, I'm going to describe you risk factors of a stroke. So first of all, atherosclerosis. So what is atherosclerosis? In this abnormal fat deposition occurs in the blood vessels, all body. So uh, when this fat deposition uh, reaches to the brain level, it causes stroke. Second one is hypertension. In hypertension, blood vessels go, uh, goes undergoes uh, various problems. So blood vessels of the brain weaken and as a result, these blood vessels rupture abnormally. And next one is anticoagulation therapy. So it can lead to abnormal hemorrhage. And third one is diabetes mellitus. Next one is stress and obesity and oral contraceptives. So women who take oral contraceptives are also at risk of stroke. Next, next I'm going to describe you causes. So first one is thrombosis. So already I have described that thrombosis is an abnormal accumulation of fat in the blood vessels of the body. Next one is embolism. So it is any air formation or any uh, bubble of the air or bubble of the water and it reaches to the brain level in the blood vessels. Third one is the hemorrhage in brain or any abnormal hemorrhage resulting from the rupture of the blood vessels of the brain tissues. Next one is transient ischemic attack. So these all are the causes of the cerebrovascular accident or stroke. Next one is clinical manifestations of cerebrovascular. So what patient will face problems first one is slow and bounding pulse when we count the pulse of the patient so we uh, feel that the patient's pulse rate is slow and pulse is feeling as a bounding pulse next one is hypotension patient goes under hypertension second one is knuckle rigidity so the neck of patient uh, is can't movable it is stable at the one side next one is ataxia so what is ataxia it is the abnormal movement of the muscles and uncontrolled movement of the muscles. Next one patient will face visual changes. In this, uh, he can face uh, diplopia, blindness or patches blindness, etc. Next one is paralysis. Patient can goes under paralysis of the total body or one side of the body or only extremities of the body. Next one is dysarthria. It means it leads to severe joint pains. So, how could we diagnose the stroke or cerebrovascular accident? First of all, we would see all the signs and symptoms. If these signs and symptoms are positive in patient, so it is a positive indication of stroke or cerebrovascular accident. Then next one we will see about the uh, brain anatomy and brain physiology through three uh, techniques. First one is X-ray. So we can um, see all the anatomical structure of the brain through x-ray. If we want to see more about the brain anatomy and physiology, then we have to refer CT scan and MRI. Third one, we would, uh, we would uh, face some problems at the ventricle level. So we would uh, apologize this EEG. It means electroencephalography. And next one, we would take the Glasgow coma scale of the patient. It means we will see the disorientation, if it present or not, the response of the patient, verbal, how could uh, patient speech or not. So these all are the diagnostic evaluation of the stroke or CVA. Next, how could we manage the CVA or stroke? The first one is proper positioning. It means we would place the patient one side or the head is elevated. So the patient can't uh, aspirate the uh, fluids or secretions through the throat or nose. Next one is vital signs. So proper monitoring of vital sign is also necessary in the stroke. Next one is suctioning. If any fluid or secretion is present in the trachea or in the lungs, so we have to suction it properly and time to time. Next one is medication. So we would uh, give medications like uh, thrombolytic medications, 
coagulative medications and uh, antidepressant and uh, other is painkiller to relieve the pain. So these medications we would provide to the patient. Next one is patent airway. So when any brain damage occurs, so patient is goes under oxygen depletion or hypoxemia. So in this condition, we should maintain proper ventilation through the patent airway and we would maintain proper uh, airway through the ventilator with the hand ventilator. So this all about the cerebrovascular accident. So thank so you friends.